Dear students, today's video is on the process of translation. Now what is translation? It's simply the process of creating proteins from an mRNA template. And the sequence of the nucleotides on the mRNA will be translated into the amino acid sequence of the proteins and this reaction will be carried out by the ribosomes. The main steps of translation are number one, activation of the amino acid, number two, amino acylation of tRNA or charging of tRNA, number three, initiation of protein synthesis, number four, elongation of the polypeptide chain, and number five, termination of protein synthesis. In this video, I'll be just taking up these two steps, that is activation of amino acid and charging of the tRNA. Next three steps will be done in the next video. First step, that is activation of the amino acid. So amino acid will react with ATP to form a complex that is amino acid AMP complex. And since ATP will be join, will be converted into AMP in this complex. So we have the release of two phosphate groups as pyrophosphate. And for this reaction, that is reaction between ATP and amino acid and formation of this product that is amino acid AMP complex, we need an enzyme. So there is a specific magnesium dependent am amino acid activating enzyme. And what is that? Amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So we have different amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme, each for a specific amino acid. Now this complex that is amino acid AMP complex, we, normally this is the product, this gets detached from the enzyme. But here, in this case, it will remain associated with the enzyme for some time and energy will be released from pyrophosphate that will be retained in this complex that is AAMP complex. So in this, we are going to show the reaction that is the amino acid reacting with ATP in presence of which enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase. And this complex will be formed, that is am amino acid getting attached to AMP, still remaining attached to the enzyme, that is amino acyl tRNA synthetase, forming a complex that is called as amino acyl adenylate enzyme complex. And conversion of ATP into AMP, we have two pyrophosphate released. Now, in the second step, that is amino acylation of tRNA or charging of tRNA. Now we have in the first step, we have this complex formed that is amino acyl AMP enzyme complex. To this complex, we have a tRNA, which is specific for that activated amino acid and is going to at attach to this complex with its D loop, meaning this reaction will also be occurring in presence of the same enzyme as we had for activation of the amino acid, that is amino, as, as amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So the activated amino acid then is transferred to its specific tRNA and it's attached to the three prime end of the tRNA. So this resulting complex that is formed, that is tRNA amino acyl complex, will separate from the enzyme, the synthetase enzyme, and it's called as charged tRNA. And this charged tRNA will move to the ribosomes for protein synthesis. And the energy that is released by conversion of ATP to AMP in the first step will also be retained in this amino acyl tRNA complex that will be used later for peptide bond formation between two amino acids. So we are showing this step in a reaction form where you have the amino acyl AMP complex, enzyme complex reacting with a specific tRNA. The activated amino acid will get attached to the tRNA and 
separate from the enzyme and AMP will separate out. These two steps are depicted in this figure where you have this enzyme that is amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So we have different types of this enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase each catalyzing a specific reaction, a specific amino acid. So these are specific with to each other. That means we have one amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme for a specific amino acid. So since this enzyme is catalyzing the first two steps, so it's going to have three active sites, one for the amino acid, second for the ATP and third for attachment of the tRNA. So in the first step that is activation of the amino acid, you have a particular amino acid entering here which is catalyzed by a particular synthetase enzyme. ATP will enter here and in the first step in the activation of the amino acid, you have the amino acid getting attached to AMP and two pyrophosphate will be released. And so energy will be released by hydrolysis of this pyrophosphate, which will be retained in this complex between the activated amino acid and AMP. Now in the second step, the same enzyme will catalyze the second step that is charging of the tRNA. So a specific tRNA which is having a specific anticodon for that specific amino acid will enter, get attached to this, to the enzyme by its D loop, the synthetase enzyme by its D loop. And the activated amino acid will get attached to the three prime end of the tRNA and AMP will get displaced. And then, so for example, you have this site amino acid will be methionine. So if, if this enzyme, this synthetase enzyme is catalyzing the reaction for, for amino acid methionine, so methionine will enter here and the tRNA having the anticodon UAC because the codon for methionine is AUG because it acts as a start codon and it codes for the amino acid methionine. So you have UAC here at the one end of the tRNA as its anticodon and here the amino acid will be methionine and this will get attached to the tRNA by at its three prime end. So this is specific for each and then in the second step after the amino acids gets attached to the tRNA this amino acid tRNA will separate from the enzyme and the enzyme will be free to catalyze another similar reaction that is for the same amino acid. So this amino acid tRNA synthetase will have a specific amino acid attached here because depending upon the nature of its anticodon and the energy that has been released by hydrolysis of the pyrophosphate will be retained between the amino acid and the three prime end of the tRNA and that will be later used in the formation of a peptide bond. Amino acids has two functional groups NH2 and CH, COH. So it is going to attach to the tRNA by its COH group and this now the charged tRNA carrying a specific amino acid will move towards the ribosomes for protein synthesis. So that's all for today in this video and in the next video we will be taking up the next three steps of the process of translation. Thank you and God bless you all.